Hello my book loving friends and welcome back to Storytime with Mary. This is where we get to read all of our favourite books and if you're loving reading along with Mary don't forget to hit the like button and also subscribe to our videos so that we can read together all the time. Okay book lovers I've got such a fun adventure for you today it's a bit of an underwater adventure. We are going to be reading a really, really cool and sparkly book called Naughty Narwhal. This book is written by Emma Adams and Katie Halford. So if you've got Naughty Narwhal at home, grab it now and let's read it together. Now, book lovers, I wonder what a narwhal is. I asked my daughter because I wasn't sure what a narwhal is. I never heard of it. And she told me that a narwhal is part whale and part unicorn or a unicorn whale is that true so book lovers because i couldn't find any fun facts about narwhals i'm going to tell you a fun fact about whales today book lovers okay so the blue whale did you know that the blue whale is the largest creature to ever inhabit the earth it's huge. They are as big as a Boeing 747. Do you know how big that is? That is a really big aeroplane. And that's about how big a blue whale is. There was actually a blue whale found in the Antarctic some years ago that was 100 foot long and weighed 144 tonnes. That is huge. I can't even explain to you how large a hundred foot is. But just think about a really giant jumbo jet that you might get on to go on a holiday. That's how big the blue whale is. And I'm going to tell you a few facts about the blue whale because I'm absolutely fascinated by them. So a blue whale's tongue can be heavier than an elephant. Let's just think about that for a minute just its tongue it's heavier than an elephant and when blue whales are born they're already about 25 feet long and weigh up to seven tons they are absolutely ginormous and the last fun fact i'm going to tell you about blue whales is that the ocean is part whale pee because they're so big they pee lots and blue whales actually pee about 166 gallons every single day so next time you go paddling in the sea just remember you're paddling in whale pee okay book lovers shall we get cracking and read our book naughty narwhal welcome to sea town a wonderful place where clownfish swim while pink seahorses race, the green turtles dance, and an octopus swings near lobsters that lay while a puffer fish stings. Everyone's friends here. They love to have fun. That is every creature except for this one. Meet Naughty Narwhal. Here she is, right on cue. She's simply the naughtiest narwhal. It's true. You never would guess all that she has in store. But listen, come closer and I'll tell you more. One sunny day in the deepest blue sea, narwhal was feeling as bored as can be. Distractedly, she swam along the seabed and that's when she spied her friend Crab up ahead, hiding behind the tall seagrass that grew. She waited and waited, and then she cried out, Boo! Next thing you know, with a giant glint in her eye, Narwhal saw jellyfish swishing nearby. Before anyone had 
the chance to say stop. She pointed her horn, then took aim and went pop. How Narwhal giggled and chuckled with glee until she heard something now. What could it be? Cookies and cakes and sandwiches all in a row. A party! Was Narwhal invited? Oh no. No one had asked her. No, they hadn't said. So, what happened next? Naughty Narwhal saw red! She knocked over donuts and cookies and cake. She took a big ice cream, the one with the flake, then pushed over lobster, bopped place on the tail, bumped into seahorses, said mean things to the whale. And off Narwhal swam with an unhappy swish along the bright coral, past kelp and starfish, deeper and deeper through seagrass that swayed as shadows appeared and the light seemed to fade. Until there in the dark sat a weathered shipwreck with a mast pointing high on a large wooden deck. She jumped with surprise as she heard a loud creak. What was inside? She would just take a peek. Don't take a peek, Narwhal. Inside the ship, Narwhal went to explore and look at the treasures that lay on the floor. She felt a bit sad. Oh, her friends had been cross, but she wasn't sorry. Yes, she was the boss. I'm naughty Narwhal, she called to the dark. And that's when she came face to face with a <gasps> shark. Help, whispered Narwhal, so scared and afraid. But do you think anyone came to her aid? Of course not, for this naughty, rude, teeny weeny had been such a ghastly and naughty, big meanie. The shark looked at her and she looked at him. There was nothing left for it. She just had to swim. Out of the shipwreck and up to the town, she swam through the coral and didn't slow down. Then sped to her bedroom and into her bed and pulled all the covers right over her head. Poor little Narwhal was so terribly sad. Her naughty behavior was terribly bad. How could she fix things? Was there a way? If only there was something that she could say. Suddenly, Narwhal knew what she had to do. She leapt out of bed and then, wee off she flew. Back in the town, every lobster, crab, fish was at the crab shack. Oh, that place is so swish. Narwhal burst in and they gasped in surprise. She made lobster jump. He tipped over his fries. She stayed at the front so that they could all see. Then, then said, I'm so sorry. Oh, please forgive me. Would they forgive her? She did seem sincere. Well, finally, everyone gave a big cheer. For they knew the one thing that everyone should. It was never too late to decide to be good. And there with her friends, having fun on the reef, Narwhal agreed to turn over a new leaf. After the day, Narwhal played no more pranks. She was super nice and always said please and thanks. Naughty no more, she was happy as can be in this wonderful place in the deepest blue sea where all creatures smile and they love to have fun. That is every creature, including this one. Oh, well done, you naughty narwhal. So what did we learn from this book? Narwhal was very naughty, always playing mean and cruel pranks on her friends, wasn't she? But then she got in trouble and no one came to her aid because she had just been too mean to everybody. But then she went back and said sorry and everybody was friends with her again. 
So what's the moral of this book? It's never too late to say sorry. And when you say sorry, that's a good thing. Okay, book lovers, if you loved this book as much as we did, don't forget to hit the like button and also subscribe to our videos. And we will read together again next time. Bye.